How are we going everybody? Have a look at this wonderful garden, eh? Our lettuce finished and some of it's going to seed and you can see I'm leaving it to go to seed because this is what we get. Lots of weeds for starters but we get all these little babies coming up. See these ones here? They're little seedlings, they're self-germinated seedlings. It looks pretty messy I know because we've got all these weed growing through the whole garden bed which I'm about to clean up now and prepare for spring as well but I don't want to waste these little seedlings. I'm not sure how many of you actually have seedlings self-germinating. I know that tomatoes, like the cherry tomatoes, are quite a common variety that self-germinate. So is lettuce, silver beets, uh, even spring onions will pop up. What else pops up like this? Mustard does, endives, chicory, all grows like that. Now, when you look at it like this, have a look. Look how messy it is. It looks terrible, doesn't it? really bad. Now I'm going to use my little bulb trowel here because I love the little shark tooth on the end. It gets right underneath that without, without any problems and you can pop it straight out like that. Now we carefully take this little plant out. Now we're going to try and keep all the roots intact, get all the side weeds. Don't worry about that one there. There we are. There's one. There's two seedlings. Now we just got that out of this little patch there, right there. I've been doing some harvesting earlier on today. Now I want you to look at this. Normally you would say, wow, what a joke, what a mess. He doesn't know how to garden. I'm letting it settle, I'm letting it sit. I don't mind the weeds growing through because I am going to dig it all out and create it into this environment here, like that there. Now before we go to that, let's take these over here and I'll show you what I did earlier. Clean out this little garden bed here, the raised bed, and these are the ones I dug up earlier. Now, if I didn't tell you about the ones earlier on and showed you what it looked like, you would, would have thought that I sowed these in a tray or something like that, like a hot house or a seedling tray, or bought a punnet of seedlings that just transplanted them. These have all grown on their own, and by separating and planting them out just like this here, nature gives it all for you folks. It's okay to let your garden look a little bit ratty sometimes, but once you do clean it up at the end and you see all the self-germinating seedlings, these little seedlings, folks, are going to outperform anything that you buy, and I can guarantee you that pretty much anything that you buy from a local garden centre. These have self-germinated, so they have acclimatised to the conditions in your garden, as these ones here have acclimatised to mine. Now, you saw what you saw there earlier. The messy garden looked like rubbish. You'd normally just go over there and just turn it over, hoe it in into the garden. But now I've got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen 12, 14, 16 with the two in my hand. These are lettuce. What are they worth in the garden centre? I don't know. What are they worth in a supermarket? About two bucks each, two fifty, three for three bucks each. Naturally grown, no chemicals, easy to grow, self-maintaining, just a little bit of water is all you need to do. And that's what we're all going to be practicing, trying to grow our own little seedlings. I'm going to plant these two here just to finish off the row, folks. And I've been digging it over just using a little bulb trowel. You can use the tea spade if you like, or something like a garden fork. This does the job really well. Now, this garden bed here, we brought in some soil from a garden centre, which um, in the early stages was really not doing that well, wasn't helping the plants grow that well. They weren't performing well, so there was something really bad about the soil. We've worked with it, and you can see now the, the chicory is growing again. The spring onions, they always do well. They're easy to grow. And the lettuce and the leafy greens seem to grow well. The tomato struggled. Well, we're going to give it another go this year. Now, when I plant these in here, Normally I'd be saying to you to put some mulch on, but you've got to check your soil this time of the year as well. This is quite damp by comparison to the other garden beds that are a lot lower. So I have received a few comments saying, well, we don't put mulch on our garden bed and we let the sun rays shine on the soil so we can get the heat there and all that stuff, which is great if your garden bed doesn't hold moisture. This one holds moisture. Seriously, whoa, I'm getting licked to death here. Come on. Wow, come here, mate. All right. This is Vader, this is Kara, they look like twins now. All right, go, this way, go, go. Good girl. Vader, leave her alone. Kara, go away. <laughs> it's, oh, really? Leave her alone. She's going to bite you, mate. She is the alpha. He's still a puppy. All right, so uh, mulch in your garden bed. If it doesn't hold moisture, I mulch it because I need it to hold the moisture in. If it holds moisture like this one does, I don't put any mulch on top like the straw. You can see the straw that I've had here earlier on. That's from last season. It's breaking down. I've dug most of it into the garden and that's fine. So if you're preparing your garden bed for springtime for planting and it holds water, don't put the mulch on top because it's just going to make it even more damp. You want it to drain out and get some airflow through the middle of it. The mulch is great there for the warmer parts of the year where you need to stop it from drying out too quickly. And that's 
what happens over there in these garden beds in the lower ones where the uh, mustard's growing, that's right, that needs to be mulched over because otherwise it goes bone dry. And I'll show you what I mean by bone dry because exactly on the other side is what the problem is. Before we go to the other garden bed that I was mentioning, have a look at this garden bed here. I've planted something. Can you see what I've planted? Don't look at that. That's been eaten by the chooks because they jumped in here and I was scratching around earlier on. I did hydrate this earlier after I planted, but these little things here, see that? See that there? That there? There? Over here again, another one, all there. More lettuce. This, that's a coral leaf lettuce, which is a purple leaf as well. And look here, all the spring onions are finally starting to come up. There's another one in there, here. There's even more lettuce on its own growing. There's the spring onions. We, we kept the root system and we planted it back into the ground. Now these little lettuce came from over here. This is the garden bed where those little lettuces came from. Now I hydrated this. I shouldn't have so I can show you how bone dry it was. Let me just dig down below and see if it is actually dry underneath. Yeah, have a look. I haven't got my four in one soil survey instrument with me at the moment to test it, but that is dry. That's just the dry soil underneath it. I've only gone about two or three inches, not even. So I hydrated the top, just gave them a light sprinkle because when I was cleaning this garden bed out to take out all these weeds here, as you can see here, it was bone dry, literally dry underneath. Here, for example, I won't step in here. I just got this here from under the silver beet leaf where the water didn't get to it. That's just dry, sandy loam, it's gone into sand. Now I had some pine bark in here, I had some mulch and all that sort of stuff, but I let this, uh, I let this to stay open to see how it performs, because I, I am doing different trials, folks. I'm letting weeds grow, I'm letting mulch go in the garden bed, I'm letting plants go to seed. This garden bed here is very acidic, and it's an example of the lettuce leaf here. They've bolted, they haven't grown to their full capacity, but rather gone to seed. So I'm gonna be adding black grit over the top, and you can do the same with your garden bed. If you've got existing plants in your garden, you can apply the black grit directly over the top, and with a good watering, it'll soak it right through and work its way down to the root zone where it needs to be. Or otherwise, if you're preparing your garden bed like I did earlier in the other one there, basically add your manure compost and mulch, then turn it in and level it off and then give it a nice soak. And if it's a dry garden bed that doesn't hold water, put your mulch over the top to keep it warm and keep it hydrated. Here are the other little seedlings. See this little forest here? Let's just get the mulch out of the way. We've got seedlings. One, two, three, four, five, six, no. No, only five left in here. Maybe more? No, oh, yeah, that's only five. I dug out about six or seven before, but just in this little cluster here, 10 or 12 little lettuce plants. And over here, there's at least another 20 or 30. Put a dollar value on that. As a seedling, fine. You're comparing seedlings with the ones that germinate in your own garden from the ones you buy. Chalk and cheese, you can't compare the two as far as quality is concerned. As far as the taste is concerned, even more so you can't compare the quality between your supermarket bought lettuce and your own grown in your own backyard. Lettuce grows like a weed. There'll be, I can look throughout this whole garden, but I've got kale growing over there. I just remembered there's a forest of that over there as well. You can't compare what grows in your own backyard to what you buy from your local store. If you haven't grown a vegetable, if you haven't grown a vegetable, in your life. Now's the time to actually go out there and plant something while we're in lockdown and trial it and explore it, experience it and taste it. And then compare that to what you've grown up eating. If you haven't grown one, for whatever the reason folks, I'm not judging you. I'm not saying that because you haven't grown it's not the right thing or it's the wrong way in your life. There's all sorts of circumstances. Here's the opportunity now to grow something, whether it's in a pot, balcony, courtyard, or backyard, front yard, side nature strip, the soil somewhere around the vicinity of your house where you sleep. Get something into the soil, germinate it, grow it, harvest it, enjoy it, and think about the flavors you got out of that garden, how it's grown, because you'll nurture those little beauties like we do, well, I try to do, the time that I have out here, uh, you'll nurture the little seedlings and grow them up and then harvest and share it with your family. Because once you taste it from your garden, I guarantee you'll never want to go back to the supermarket again, folks. Better time now than never. And if you need something, obviously go and check out our website because we are running up to 70% off everything online for you. And use the secret code word SECRET to get up to 20% off a whole range of products. Black Red is discounted to 20 bucks four kilos twin pack. Everything's discounted, discounted because we want you to have the opportunity to get something great into your garden and it's natural, no chemicals, no poisons, no additives, none of that stuff. So you can have a wonderful garden, so you can enjoy it with your family and friends, obviously within the same household, <laughs> and one day with your neighbors and people down the street as well. Check it out at 
vasilisgarda.com and if you need to make a phone call, you can call us at 1300 627 374 to place an order. From me, Vasily, Maresi.